Bill, among contemporary scientists who believe in God, the primary argument that they would have to themselves or ones they would uh, propound speaks about the fine-tuned universe and particularly looks at the constants of cosmology and physics as uh, needing to be so fine-tuned that in order for galaxies to exist and stars and planets and ultimately human beings. So that's where they would put their um, their uh, uh, belief system in terms of proof. They may have their personal belief, but in terms of being able to state it. Uh, how do you look upon the fine-tuning argument? I've never been been that thrilled with it. I mean, I think it's suggestive. I mean, the, basically what you're dealing with is a counterfactual. It's that if the universe, if you change these uh, parameters or constants a little bit, then the world would not be life permitting or galaxies would not form or stars would not form. <clears throat> so that's the sort of argument that, that's made. Uh, the problem is, that, as I see it, is you know, these, the, the status of those counterfactuals. What, what, how do you know what the probabilities are, let's say, of getting a universe that's different from that? How do you start tinkering with that and getting some sense of how this universe could have been other than ours. It seems that you're, I mean, what's, what's underlying these fine-tuning arguments is, it seems to me, some sort of probabilistic argument that, that this was just a very lucky universe of the different possible universes that were there. Right. And it's not clear to me how you assign probabilities for the universe, because, I mean, there's no pre-universe out of which the universe emerged, you know, I mean, that where you could, I mean, probabilities, I, I'm a professional probabilist, but you assign them against a, a certain backdrop, usually a causal mm. backdrop that allows you then to s assess, you know, assign numbers between zero and one and how likely something is. But it seems that there's no real way to do this, except you have to then make certain assumptions about, well, was there some quantum fluctuation or something? You have to get behind the universe in some way and then say, okay, this is how I'm going to assign probabilities. But there's, there's no way to back that up empirically, okay? I mean, because there's no empirics there. You can't go back, you know, <laughs> before the beginning of well, the Well, he, he, here's how the argument goes, and you, you would know it, is yeah. that you take one of these uh, two dozen or two, two and a half dozen parameters and say, well, if this varied by how many orders of magnitude or what percentage of the, of the total would this have to vary, and then either you won't have a star forming or that it will burn so fast that, that you couldn't have life evolving or, or yeah. something like that. And you get some very, uh, in some cases, very, very tight tolerances, mm -hmm. in some cases a little bit broader, but you'd have to do that with every single one of these 30 parameters, and, and suddenly if you'd multiply those probabilities, yeah. you'd get an incredibly but, 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 small But look number. at what you're doing. You're putting little units form probabilities over you know there's these error bounds you know yeah, because you've got right. these constants they're taking particular values and then you're putting little tolerances yeah, there and right, saying right. there's Here, a certain probability to, right. but i mean you know what if the probabilities are not a little uniform probability but they're there's some tightly uh, some some peaked probability you know where actually most of the probability is concentrated at precisely where those constants are but you don't have are. an even distribution yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and the thing is, I mean, uh, something like Quentin Smith will take that to extreme and say there's only one way it could have all happened. And in that case, he gets a universe with our fine-tuning uh, our fine-tuning characteristics of probability one. You know, and then other people, you know, if they, if you put the probabilities the way you did, you know, then it would be very, uh, very small probability. You know, in which case my design inferential sort of mechanism could kick in. But the thing is, where are you getting those probabilities? And it seems to me that cosmologists are all over the map on this. You know, from a universe with probability one that has these fine-tuning characteristics to something which is wildly improbable. Well, I think, I think cosmologists, many would like to find it with probability one on some of these uh, constants, and that's their goal, that's their, their holy grail. But uh, there are many cosmologists who, and physicists who now say that that's impossible. Many do not. Maybe, many say that they, we may be able to find that. But if that is impossible to find, then we're reduced to this very high uh, uh, probabilistic uh, uh, analysis that would show the, that, that, that our universe to sustain life is extremely improbable, and therefore you, then you have to invoke a multi-universe yeah. in order to have the, the, the one we're in occur. Yeah. Well, I, I think that there, there are all these moves that, that have to be made then if you're going to try to explain away the fine-tuning. Uh, you know, but it's, uh, 
but it's still, it seems to me that the, the, you know, the, an image that I use is, is this, uh, you know, if you've got an oil painting, you know, you've got a canvas, and you can ask whether that canvas is on the stretcher is designed, or is this a result of some, some sort of intelligence, then you can ask how the paint was applied to the canvas is designed. Now, in, in, in this analogy, design in the universe, like the biological design that I look at, is like the paint on the canvas. You know, the paint could have been just tossed there randomly. It could represent a, a, a landscape, which would, we would know to be designed. But then you can ask about the canvas itself. Is it designed or is it not? And it seems, though, with the canvas, we can still say, OK, well, the canvas is built of materials, you know, pre-existing materials that are already around there. But there is no pre-existing material to make the universe that we, as we know it, at, at least not, not that we can get at scientifically. It would be something that, you know, that, that, that pre-exists anything that we have scientific access to. So it seems to me we're, we're, in, we're in the world of pure speculation. And therefore, you have more trouble using that as evidence of design. Well, you know, as I said, I think it's suggestive, you know, but, uh, but I, don't, I don't think you can make a real uh, tight argument there. I find it fascinating that many of the people who would use the fine-tuning argument as the best evidence for God, an inference to this best explanation being, mm -hmm. being a creator, using the fine tuning argument, would reject rather rapidly your approach to intelligent design for things within the universe, yeah. particularly in the biological area. Yeah. And, and, and they would do it because the, they would see in the biological area a, a, a mechanism, Darwinian, in some form or another, that can work and explain this stuff that has emerged, but absolutely impossible to explain these fine-tuned constant for the basically the physical and cosmological structure of the whole. So yeah. in their world, the paint looks pretty random, yeah. but that canvas is superb. <laughs> Quite right. Well, and, and for, for me, it's the, 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 the paint is looking highly designed, and the canvas, it's just a, you have a hard time figuring out whether the canvas was designed because we don't know what the pre-existing materials were for that canvas. Yeah, there may be another problem in the fine-tuning argument, and I'd like your opinion on it, and, and, and that is that when you do the tests of, of each individual uh, 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 constant, you, you get certain bounds. We don't know the probability distribution of that bound. Granted, that was a good point. But w we do each one separately. What, we, what you, you don't do, because that's hard, is, is conjointly several at the same time. And it possibly could be that if you, if you vary two or three or four in some pattern, there's a different pattern can, can, can be there can be a, a dependency. Yeah, There's a lot so, of... so whether you can even multiply them, that right. becomes another question. Right. You know, I think, uh, and the, I think the, the physicist's dream, I mean, so I think something like Stephen Hawking would like to see some sort of self-contained theory equation where somehow all these constants just pop out of it as a matter of necessity. Sure, many, uh, many would. Every, every yeah, physicist yeah, would like yeah, to see that. Yeah. It's just some now recognize or believe that they do that that's going to be absolutely impossible. Yeah. As much as they would like to do it, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, it doesn't, I don't think it gives any indication of happening. And so. therefore, they turn to a multiverse to be able to explain yeah. why we're here. Yeah, so it's we're, we're the lucky lottery and where there's a selection effect, we happen to be here, so we appreciate that we're here, right. but most universes are lifeless. They don't have observers right. like us to, to appreciate that. And that there. eliminates design because you don't need design if you have multiple universes well, is, is, it, is in their view. It, in, in their view. I think the, the problem then arises that they, they do want to use design inferences in a lot of cases, you know, that uh, ordinary cases that come up. And the thing is, if you if you've if you take the multi-universe far enough, it means that you know lots of things could be happening that are the result of chance, which we, or that are the, that are that are the result of chance that we think are designed. For instance, we think that we're communicating that we're intelligent beings, but actually we might just be robots going through the motions. And there's some place in the multiverse where that's <laughs> happening, you know, where there's no conscious thought or anything going on. We're just going through the motions, you know. So I think it. The multiverse, it solves one problem, but it's, you know, you dig, you, you, you fill one <laughs> hole and you've dug another. In fact, I'd say you've dug a whole lot of other holes, <laughs> you know, a multiverse of holes.
But at the end of the day, you would look to the paint on the canvas, yeah. which in, in your conception, using intelligent design to infer design for things in the universe rather than the universe yeah. as a, a but, whole. But you know, I think part of this is also my whole approach to design detection is probabilistic. Now, if you take a, uh, an inference to the best explanation uh -huh. approach or you know, something like a, a Bayesian, if you're happy with a Bayesian approach, then you could do a, a Richard Swinburne type move. And you know, I think you, you might make an argument that way. I don't, you know, th that's not my bag. And I, I, I've never found the Bayesian methods all that persuasive. But uh, you know, uh, to each his own. <laughs>